All right, it's a great morning. Um, I would like you guys, you know, I would like you guys to go to someone and uh, you know just uh, introduce yourself. Hey guys, welcome again. Uh, and uh, I want to welcome you guys. How many of you guys are uh, visiting here for the first time? Can you just raise your hand? And uh, you know, just oh, we want to welcome these guys. Can can we just give a big round of applause? Woo! Woo! All right, guys, you're always you're you know always welcome. This is the place. It's very far away from the village, but it's you know this is the place you should come. Okay, don't go don't go any other any other place. Okay, we have beautiful things you know happening in this place, so you should not be missing those things. So, can you just go to someone and then say hi? Yes. I mean, I, I, I love Christmas, and you know, it's just uh, all of a sudden, you know, the place becomes cozy and, and people start smiling and just, you know, starts greeting. We love Christmas, isn't it, right? And it's just, uh, especially here in Hong Kong, like, we lo I love Christmas because this time really reminds me back home. And then the, the weather, especially, the weather reminds me back home. And I think, uh, you know, we, I exchange message with Barjona, you know, I'm missing tea. And, and he, he, you know, sends me back saying, you know, I'm missing Momo and, and, and all that kind of thing, right? So it's a beautiful time for us to, to remind ourselves that, you know, that our King, the Lord, the God, you know, has come on earth. Uh, to meet us, right? So that is why I think you know it is more. It becomes more special for us to celebrate uh, this time. Uh, we are in Psalm. We are in Psalms. Uh, you know, all of us journeying together. And uh, today we, uh, I picked uh, Psalm chapter forty-seven uh, for a particular reason. Uh, you know, I want to do more than just you know um, share a beautiful sermon and feel really good and and go home, right? Uh, I don't. I don't want to do that, you know. I, I've been uh, throughout my sickness uh, over the the whole whole month. I was reminded and I was struck by God's, you know, God's question. This question about question about what you would do if you will not be able to stand and walk again, or do things that you were capable to do. Will you still worship me? Will you still follow me? Or will you still share the gospel uh, to the people? And he was really challenging me hard, hardcore. He was really speaking me, you know, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a deepest part of my, my heart. Where I had to say to the Lord, saying, Lord, yes, even all of these things does not make sense to me. I want to worship, I want to follow you, and I want to praise you. It was very hard for me to make and to say that because I was going through this neurological problem and then, and, and we were, uh, you know, we were not quite sure about like, you know, I'm going to again live a life or, you know, I was like, really, it was, it, it was a serious condition for me to go through the major surgery in my life. And I had never gone through that contemplation and I had never asked that questions to God, like, Lord, do I really serious about God? Am I really serious about God? That is why today, you know, it's my purpose of bringing this psalm. It's not about you feel good about it and then just go home and then and forget about it. But I want you to leave this out because I am trying to leave this out. And it is blessing me. It is breaking me and it is challenging me every day. That is why we're here. That is why we're here. You spend your time, your energy, spend your money to come here. And please do not waste your time, waste your money. And Western energy. I want you to take this seriously back home and use it for the glory of God. And God is going to use, God is going to use that intentionality, intentionality that you will have and uh, the commitment that you will make for God. Let us read this Psalm. Uh, Sene, my friend, could you help me read this uh, chapter? Psalm 47, verse 1 to 8. Uh, it's going to be displayed on the screen. 
So we're just going to read it. Psalm 47, from verse 1 to 8. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout joyfully to God with a joyful shout. Because the Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great King of the whole world. He subdues the nation under us, subdues all people beneath our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the heights of Jacob, which he loves. I am, I am controlling for me. Try. Oh. Okay. Here. God has gone up with a joyful shout, the Lord with a blast of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. Because God is King of the whole world, sing praises for the song of instruction. God is King over the nations. God sits on His holy throne. Amen. Amen. I really like the verse 1. It is a command and it is a call to all, right? To all of us. Not only Africans, or not only charismatic, charismatics, right? You know, clap your hands, or you know, dance and then do all that kind of thing. You know, show your charisma and, and worship the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. No, no, no. It's it is the command. The psalmist reminds, you know, like he on, you know, in the, the, the in, in the first verse, he asks people, all people, all people from all nations, to clap and to bring that joyful noise before God. You know, I mean, like, it is very difficult for us these days to do such a thing because then I remember, like, you know, one, uh, one time when my wife started clapping because we come from that culture, like, we, you know, naturally clap, uh, even, like, without the uh, tempo or whatever it is, you know, like, in the middle of the song or whatever. You know, when, we, when we feel, like, really, like, encouraged or joyful, we clap, we clap. And then the, and the she was, like, looked at, you know, and then by someone and then said, do you really need to clap? in the church and it was like oh, oh, oh okay is it disturbing and then we we then uh, began to uh, choose another gesture for for worshiping god you know kind of like cool and and standing and hands like this and or sometime in the pocket you know and we used to lift our hands like that but now it's like praise the lord god you know but then now we, we don't do it we, we look very smart and we're just gonna Praise, yes, God, hello, you know, and then slowly back up. I'm not seeing by anyone. I'm not even clapping my hands. Thank you, God. We just stand still and be quiet and, you know, like as if like we are really contemplating the face of God himself. But I don't think so. We are thinking about God. I think we are maybe thinking about the Game of Thrones or maybe the next episodes. 2019, right? We're waiting for season, season six. Yes, see, we are, we are updated. Come on, guys. I spoke. I was chanting you. I found you. Okay. Anyways, see, we are, we are so... See, that's the passion speaking there, right? That's the, that, that's the passion. The passion speaking there. If I say, you know, the great, uh, you know, the next, uh, you know, the, 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 what is that? The adventure tour or what, what was that? Uh, the, the passion tour then nobody knows, you know, what is that passion tour, you know? Uh, but we talk about, you know, just like uh, Game of Thrones and uh, maybe like The Last King. And I, I love those, by the way. I really love those, those King and Queen's um, episodes. Why I'm saying this? Because this is, the psalm reminds, and, 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 and he is talking about the outward expression of the inward joy, right? The joy that which we have inside in us given by God, is now expressed outwardly, seen outwardly, and he's talking about this clapping of hands, uh, which indicates that, and which is visible, and which is, you know, being made visible to the people, where we can see that now, the, you know, the, the God and the praise of God, it does not only reside in our, in, in our hearts, but it is, it is, you know, it is made visible um, outwardly. So that's the expression that he is talking about, right? And I really like about, you know, he introduces this theme of king again. He talks about, in verse 2, he is the great king of the whole world because God is king of the whole world in verse 7 as well. You know, he talks about bringing, praising that passionate 
praise to the to who to that king to the lord most high and he's going to add another thing onto that theme of king in fact he's going to talk about king all over the psalms he's again and again talking about you know talking about god and he's naming god as the great king i'm going to talk about this one in verse 8 he says god is king over the nations god sits on his holy throne psalm in psalms the psalmist talks about God as being the great king. He is not only the king of one particular place, but he is the king over all the earth, over all the territories. He is the king, the master, the God who created everything. Everything belongs to him. So, you know, you, now, you, know what, you notice what he's doing here right now? That he is asking to praise for praise. He is asking people to worship him, praise him with really making joyful noise shouts, not really being timid and powerless and maybe, you know, should I give or not? You know, maybe should I worship or not? Maybe I don't feel like worshiping today, you know? No, he is saying that, explicitly saying you should shout and you should praise the Lord by clapping of hands, showing that you should make it explicitly, explicitly clear that our God, the Lord, deserves this. And you should make a loud noise, right? Loud noise. And I'm going to tell you why later on in the, in the later chapters, okay? So he, say, you know, he ties this theme of king, God as being the king, uh, with, with the praise. And he asks people to praise him, knowing that he is our Lord, the most high God, the king. And in verse 8, he talks about this king is not only an ordinary king, but this king is the holy of holiest king. Hallelujah. Amen. We should, I mean, like, we should read the Bible. And, the God, you know, the psalmist, the, the prophets makes it very clear that this king is not an ordinary king. This king is that benevolent king, that just king. But more than just a being, a powerful king, he is the holy one who rules over the earth. And Isaiah, ha Isaiah had that, you know, glimpse of experience when he gazes upon this holy of holiest throne. Uh, in Isaiah 6, 1, 5. In the year of King Uzziah, Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a high, an exalted throne, the edges of his robe filling the temple. Winged creatures were stationed around him. Each had six wings. With, with two they veiled their faces. With two their feet. And with two they flew about. They shouted to each other saying, Holy, holy is the Lord of heavenly forces. All the earth is filled with God's glory. The door frame shook at the sound of their shouting, and the house was filled with smoke. I said, mourn for me. I am ruined. I am a man with unclean lips, and I live among a people with unclean lips. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord of heavenly forces. Amen. He had this experience. He's having this experience of seeing this God, the King, the Most High God, the King, in that holy place. And you know, later on, you, know, you can read by yourself what happens after this experience to the life of Isaiah. He sends him, all right? He sends him to the world. He sends him to a great mission that God had for him. This great king, you know, he, the psalmist asks us to praise God, but we need to know the God as king in our life. We don't live in the days of king and queen, uh, queen, king and, uh, queens, but I know for sure that the that, you know, psalmist is asking us to know this God, asking for a reason. And, and I think, you know, even for us, many times we want to praise God, worship God for reasons, right? When God is doing something in our life, we want to worship Him. I'm speaking from my own life experiences. If God is answering my prayer, my heart fills with gratitude and I just want to say, Lord, I want to thank you for healing me. I want to thank you for answering your prayer. That brother gave life to you, God. I was praying for that brother. Thank you for answering your prayer. Many times what happens is that, you know, our praise becomes conditional or our praise, when we, when we give God praises and we, 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 come, we come in contact with God and, and really want to lift him up by seeing something happen in our lives. For a reason, what he has done for us or what he would do for us, we want to worship and praise God. But I think the psalmist reminds us a very critical point. 
that we should worship, praise God, not only what he has done for us, but who he is. Right? He is the holy God. Among all other gods, he declares in Psalms again and again, among all other gods and kings, look at this God, the king, the most high God. He is the most powerful God. All other gods, he, you know, the psalmist compares with other kings and queens, those tyrant kings and queens. And he says, this God is the holy God. And he is in his character. He is holy God. And you should worship him for who he is. And not only what he has, not only, and you should worship him for not only for what he has done for your life and what he would do and what he has done on this earth. But we know for sure that our God is a God who has done things for us. Right? Who is active God. Who is not a passive God sitting out there and asking for us to praise God. Praise me. Praise me. Or do things for me, you know. Asking and bringing in a lot of, lot of gifts. Like, you know, we come from India and in Hindu background. We have a lot of these cultural things. And we have seen, like, you know, people just being burdened with, with, with all these obligations of, you know, bring me, bring me this, 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 that. And many people, they come to us sharing their testimonies. Like, we are tired of bringing things. To this God, but this God is not healing me. This God is doing nothing in my life. But rather in my life, the, 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 the problem has added on. Right? I've been suffering and I've still been suffering. But the God has not been able to do anything in my life. Right? But this God does not, our God does not sit on the throne and just commands and demands our worship or praise. But he has done things for us. Even in this psalm, the psalmist explicitly he makes us known that he, the God, has beautiful words. I want to read with you guys. Where is that verse? Sorry. Okay, yes, here. Here we go. Back. Okay. Okay. Verse 4. He chooses our inheritance for us. The heights of Jacob which he loves. God chooses our inheritance. And why that verse is so important? Sorry. Okay. Okay. So the slide is missing. Okay. Sorry. God chooses the inheritance for us. You know, he has things for us, right? And in one of the slides, I'm going to show you that, you know, what he has for us. In Ephesians, he talks about he chose us to be with him. He chose us to be his sons and daughters. He adapted us to be in his family. He adapted us to be in his family. He chose us in him before the foundations of the world. He chose us to be holy and blameless before him in love. He chose us to be adapted as sons into his family. And next slide, we, we're going to see... Next, next slide tells us that he chose us through Christ and he sacrificed himself for us so that we could be called his own people, his own sons and daughters. He has done things for us. And this, you know, many times Psalm declares that it is a marvelous thing for us to declare, right? I know each one of you can testify right now what God has done in your life, isn't it? Right? Do you, can you, can you, when you start counting your blessings, then you begin to realize that how much God has done for you. And I can only, I can only imagine, I can only thank God, I cannot thank God enough that God himself, now as we are celebrating Christmas together, that he comes down on earth, has become the most vulnerable baby, right? He is allowing himself to, be cared by someone else like human being, as being the God. He comes down on earth and he gave up himself for you and for an I. He has done things for us, therefore we praise him. We worship, we worship him, we bring glory and honor to him. And Hebrews 13, 15 says that, therefore, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly process, profess his name. Why, why we need to admit or why we need to recognize God as king in our lives? 
Why is that so important? I think one thing that is so important in our lives is to, when we think about God asking, it reminds us about our own heart's surrenderance to him. The complete trust to our God. Giving complete trust to that king who actually cares for us, who actually cares for you. You know, who actually protects you from your enemies, right? And I know that we've been told this story again and again, but then it becomes difficult for us to think that God is my king. I don't really understand that, right? Because we don't live in those, in those times now. We live in the times of like, you know, emojis, right? When express like, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And we don't really, I mean like, we live in a different world that, you know, everything is done by the, you know, press of, you know, one, one finger, right? Everything happens like that. Now, emotions are being expressed that way. You know, I'm afraid, I'm scared. Like, you know, every, like, church members would go, like, in the future, like, everyone is, like, lifting up different emojis and, like, worshiping and things like that. So we don't want to replace that worship, the active worship, you know, in that way. What I'm saying here is that, you know, our God, the king, when he becomes king over your heart, and that's where the praise happens. That's where, you know, the, the transformation happens in our heart. And that's where the thing begins to turn upside down. I'm going to ask you this question quickly right now. How many of you have really made God as king in your life? How many, how many of you have really given your life and your hearts to God completely in complete surrenderance? How many of you are really serious about you know, thinking and experiencing that God as being the total controller of your life today. And if you have not, then I'm going to, as, as a minister, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you guys, I'm going to lead you guys to, to identify, identify, Identify where you have fallen and what, what things have taken hold of your heart so much that, that you have made that particular thing as king over your life and over your hearts. You know the praise, extravagant praise, or what you call it explosive praise, or you call it passionate praise, won't happen unless you know that king over your life. Unless you have surrendered your life to him in fullest. And I want, I, want you, I, wanna, I want you guys to identify that very obstacle in your life. That again and again steals the throne of that king. And sits. And, and in that throne, something else has been sitting in that throne. So you want to take that away today. Identify. Last week, what I was doing is that as I was preparing this message, I was... God was reminding me different things in my life, different idols in my life. And I was asking God to forgive me. I was confessing God for my sins. You know, it's not, a, it's not a, like our normal Christian life is that, you know, I, I feel always like hype. I always, I always feel like, you know, spiritual, right? Do you always feel like very spiritual or always like doing things like you just, you don't feel like that, right? You go down and you go up. Sometimes you feel like, oh, really get great and... So, you know, most of the time you just go like, oof, 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 oof. and then something happens, oof. and then again, oof, 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 oof. upside up, you know, up in my, my language because of my sickness, so I cannot just get this, but I can make sound. Oof, 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 oof. Okay, I can do things. I'm trying to convey my one of my sickness. My problem is that I find difficult in uh, getting the words out. So I just, I just give the gesture, you know, what I want to do, right? So I, I, I accomplish the mission anyways. So, you know, we don't feel like always up and hyped in our spirit, right? We need to confess. We need to remind ourselves where we have fallen. We need to identify who has taken hold of in our hearts. And today, you know, this is going to be a time for us to recognize that. This is going to be a time for us to identify that and confess in your own life that, you know, who has taken hold in your life so hard, so much, that, you know, that has, become a king, that has become the king over your life. And praise, 
and explosive praise or extravagant praise or passionate praise have, have been, you know, blocked, have been, have been constrained or confined in your life so that, you know, you, won't, you, won't, you, you no more enjoy the praise life in your life. Let alone living that praise life in your life. We cannot do that. Darling says, when someone asks, where is God in these situations? You know that God is found in, in, in our prayers. He occupies our praise and with his presence, he brings his love, his healing, his forgiveness, his grace, and his mercy. Whatever is needed to make a situation turn around for the good is present as we praise the Lord. Psalm 23, 23 2 says that God inhabits in our praises. Right? God comes, he cannot be content in that throne, in that heavenly place. When we praise God, when we, when we bring ourselves to God completely, when we make that God and put God in our hearts and make him asking in our hearts, surrender him completely, then God cannot be content in that place. When we praise him, he comes down. He has to inhabit, he has to dwell amongst us. And with his dwelling, with his presence, you know, he cures he heals, he forgives, he unites, and he breaks the walls and the barriers. And it has happened over and over and over and over again in the Bible. I remember, you know, um, you know an event of, in, in Chronicles 2.20, the king Jehoshaphat was surrounded by an army, enemy's army, and he had no options besides calling God and appoint, appointing some people and men to sing praises to the Lord. And they, they, they began to sing, give, and they began to give thanks to the Lord. And as they began, as they began to worship the Lord, praise the Lord, God army, God fought against the enemies and completely, completely defeated the enemy. God fights the battle when we praise God, right? God fights our battle. He breaks the barriers and the walls that we have. Whether the walls, the walls in our, in our own hearts, whether it's spiritual walls, whatever walls that we are facing in our lives, that God is there to fight that battle. God is there to break those battles. That is why we need to clap our hands. I'm saying not only clap our hands, but I'm saying bring praise to God. That is why God calls us to worship Him and praise Him with all of our hearts. I came here in Hong Kong as a missionary, young missionary, I was 23 years old. Some of you guys have been running that age right now. I had no idea. I was invited by the inner city ministry down there uh, in Jordan. And uh, from the first day of my joining the, 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 the ministry, I had been seeing these people, like drug addicts and, and prostitutes and, and all this kind of... I'm not saying that those, those are bad people. I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, all being in the midst of all these people the whole day, and with lots and lots of children and lots of non-Christians in a small place, in a small confined place, I would feel like, oh, I'm hitting the wall. I would feel like spiritually paralyzed and collapsed. I couldn't do anything at all. I was like, I did not know what to do. I did not know from where to share the gospel because this man who is, who is like, you know, dozing off with the, the heroin, how can I share the gospel? How, how is it going to be transformed, right? So I would ask those questions every day. One thing that I chose to do was lock the door and maybe for hours and hours praise the Lord, worship the Lord. That's what I chose to do. And, 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 and funnily enough, slowly God began to move in the city. God began to bring people into his family, into his fellowship. God began to transform young people's lives. He began to change the atmosphere. He began to change the you know, the break, the barriers that I was having, that I was facing in my life. And this is what God wants us to remind it today, even today. As Hope for All Church, we know we are really situated in a place that where a lot of people need gospel. You know, we are not cultured, like, you know, we are not cultured as being the people like who really seeks God all the time. We seek after our success. We need to think about our families, money. Money God here in Hong Kong, right? Like we understand the money language, the business, funds, and all that kind of thing really overwhelms our lives. 
and has become necessity of, of, our, of our living. You know, in this city, the heart of the city, God has called you and I. And I think one thing that we can do is to praise Him. To praise Him. To worship Him so that God's Spirit and His presence would come in our midst. And He would do things on behalf of us. You know, what you could do sometimes, people are not all, they are not all singers or musicians, right? You know, one way that we can, you know, really praise God is to, to begin thinking about what he has done in your life and to thank him, right? The, the heart of thanksgiving, you know, really breaks the atmosphere. You know, it, it is, Psalm, again, Psalm, you know, the psalmist in the psalms, the whole psalm says that, Thank God, thank God, enter into his presence with thanksgiving, right? All the time, all the time. He says, why he says that? Because the heart of gratitude, the heart of thanksgiving really brings the presence of God. So we would start with thanksgiving, praising God, thanking him, even though I don't feel like thanking him amidst problem and trials. We can thank God for what he has done. Shout out. Shout out. What do you understand? Why am I shout out? When I say shout out. Come on. Oh, yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And a shout out. Why am please? God has blessed me with a place to stay in Hong Kong. Yay. Shout out. Shout out. You know, any, any, any shout outs? Any shout outs? Can you, can you just do that, please? Please do it. Yeah. God is good. Okay. God is. God is good. Yes. God is good. God is good. All the time. God is good. God is? Good. God is good all the time. <laughs> all right. I know others. I was like you last, year, last week. He is going through examination. He's, he's having exams. And he's, even in the midst of exams, he's saying like, God is good. <laughs> I wanted to come to the church. I couldn't walk. I, I started feeling, you know, like a dizzy and nausea. I just went back. And I was, I was crying because I could not worship the Lord in the church. So I started singing this song, Jesus, I enthrone you. I proclaim you as my king. I couldn't, I couldn't sing that song anymore because tears was just rolling down. Tears was just rolling down. You know? And I couldn't, I couldn't sing it. But then I was just declaring, God, you are good. God, you are good. God, you are good. Shout out does something. I was reading, and you should read this chapter of, uh, you know, Darlene Jeshuk, uh, The Explosive Praise. Okay, however you, however you pronounce that. Uh, Australian. She's Australian, so I'm, I'm, an, I'm an Indian, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can say Jessica or just, 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 okay. So, you know, he says, he reminds, she, re, she reminds, she reminds us that, that, you know, the shout out does something to us. You know, it is, it is like a battle cry. When you see, you know, when people are in the battle, they just, they just shout out, they cry. Yeah! Vikings, you know, like, have you seen that, the, those, 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 like, fightings? Yeah. Have you seen those fightings? Yeah, right? They just yell, ah! And then, the, the, you know, the, there is some energy comes in there. It's more, you know, what happens when we shout out against the enemy in the, you know, worship time. When we shout out, not angry, angrily with someone or with angrily with God, you know. We shout out the praises of God. We declare the goodness of God. What happens? You know, it is, it breaks the barriers. You know, it breaks the chains that you've been chained with. We are stepping into an, into, a, into an opposite to our circumstances, right? It was not easy for you last week to worship, praise the Lord. But you are here anyways, right? It, was, it's not been easy. It, 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 it hasn't been easy for us to praise the Lord this week, especially this month, because one of our sisters passed away. And a lot of our people, like, you know, they're they are, they are being sick and they're not being able to come to the church. And all that is happening. It, it looks like the, hell, the hell's gate is just, just being opened. All right, but amidst of all these things, even though I don't feel like praising God because I have all these things going on in my life, but I want to shout out to the Lord, saying, "Lord, you are faithful, God. God, you are a healer, God. God, you are a constant God." I'm gonna praise you. I'm gonna shout out to you, Lord, and that does something to us inside in our heart. It breaks the wall. And I'm gonna invite you guys to just to do that. I'm going to invite you guys to leave that out in your life. Choose a song over a week or, you know, choose something. Do something so where you can thank God for what he has done for you, for who he is. And, 
And you can shout out to him for who he is and for what he has done for you. You can shout out to his faithfulness. All right? He's all that. You can shout out to all these lists. Uh, you can go back and uh, we find out this. Uh, the list of God in the Old Testament. I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to end with this. Jehovah Jireh, provider. Jehovah Nisse, battle fighter. Jehovah Shalom, give, giver of peace. Jehovah Rafa, healer. Jehovah Shatkeno, our righteousness. Jehovah Shame, Shama, ever present one. Jehovah Roy, good shepherd. And, and El Roy, that means God sees you, God sees us. All these names were attributed to God, not because they wanted to give this, all these titles to God, but he has done this and he is this in our lives. And you can just name those Name those names of God in your shouting to him at all times. Not only, you know, when you feel like doing it, right? When you have time. Make time and just do it. And this is going to transform your lives. And, it's, and this is going to unleash. unleash. This is going to release God's power in your life, exponentially in your life. All right. I'm going to invite you to, to have that and experience that praise life, passionate life. Pray, uh, live, live that live that. Um, Live that passionate life of praise in your life all the time, all the time. And you influence someone to live that same kind of life when somebody sees you, somebody comes along with you, okay? Let us pray. And uh, <clears throat> we're going gonna to ask God's, um, we're going to thank God for this word. Father Lord, we want to thank you for this word. Thank you, Father, for this word. Uh, this morning, God, Father, we want to receive this word with, with thanksgiving, knowing that, God, you inhabit in our praises, God, Father. You inhabit in our praises when we, when we say thank you, God, when we choose to, choose to thank you, God, for even when we don't feel like thanking you, Jesus, Lord. Lord, we want to say, we want to shout out to you because you are the only, uh, the, the God who, the king who sits, who has to sit on our throne, God, Father, Lord. And we want to give you, we want to give you that place right now. And we want to, Lord, we want to ask you that you would come down and, and Father Lord, take glory and honor in our lives, God, Father Lord. And would you, God, Father Lord, would you just make that clear to some of us here right now that who are not being, being able to experience that, that presence in our, in our lives, who feel distant from your presence, who feel, who feel, Lord, really, really, Lord, Father Lord, obscure to understand, Lord, uh, your presence, God, Father. Right, right now, I want to pray, Father, that you would uh, just empower us, Father Lord, that you would pour out your spirit over us, that we may be able to understand that right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, Lord.